All right, wait. It's time to pick a side. The border war is on the air with PG and Ten. All right, welcome into the Border War for May the 29th. We'd like to thank listeners from last week's show in Nashville, North Carolina. I said that right. Not Nashville, Tennessee. I had no idea there was a such place as Nashville, North Carolina. To be clear, no one in Nashville, Tennessee listened to us. Shame on you. No. But Nashville, North Carolina, you had our backs. Boardman, Oregon, and San Jose, California. Go Aztecs. No. No? No. What is it? That's Spartans. It's the San Jose they? State Spartans. Where are the Aztecs? San Diego State. Ah. The Aztecs. Because there's, they're a right across of, the, there's a lot of Aztec warriors roaming around San Diego. Aren't I'm they sure. right across the street from each other? Those two schools? I don't know, man. I'm not a map. You can follow us on Twitter, at the Border War, where we will cover sports topics, but not geography. You can follow me at BG underscore Border War and Tan Man is at Tan Man 3264. Shoot us an email at BorderWar at gmail.com. Like and download us through the Spreaker app. We can also be found on YouTube. And be sure to like and share the Border War on Facebook. All right, Tan Man. It is like being trapped in a time machine. Here we are. It is 2018. The Cavaliers and the Warriors... Set to play each other in the NBA Finals, which they have like been doing for the last... 49 years and, and counting. And, and I'll be honest with you. If one of the questions, and, and I suppose this is one of the questions, is how excited... I mean, I just we just saw it on ESPN on whatever show we were watching a few minutes ago. How excited are you about this matchup? Man, it's not... It's not the repetition that has me unexcited. It's the inevitable outcome. If it were if it were the the Celtics and the Lakers from the eighties, man, people would have loved to see them play over and over again. This is not that. This yeah. isn't the Warriors versus the Cavs. This is the Warriors versus LeBron and a bunch of no name bums that can't even play basketball anymore. I mean, it just maybe that's harsh, but God, I it, it, well look, I, the 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 feeling of inevitability. I think some of it comes from. Uh, some of the coverage on ESPN. If you watched leading up to Game 7, uh, I think it was on Sunday with the Cavs and the Celtics, there seemed to be like this understanding that this is going to end tonight. The, the LeBron run is going to At least that's the feeling I got from watching it, that the Celtics were well, going to win, they were going to bury and finally put an end to the LeBron streak. And there for about a quarter and a half, it looked that way. And Friday like, afternoon, I thought the whole NBA was going to change. Boy, I was on it. I'm like, we're yeah. going to get a brand new fun nut. No, I, I you know, for a quarter and a half, I think the Celtics seemed to be in control of that series. I think they were up about 12. And I remember sitting there thinking, this, yeah, this is this is going to happen. And then, and and then, then slowly, in the second quarter, they stopped scoring. Yeah, slowly but surely, they, they let the Cavs what hang around. did they around. actually end up scoring? 79 so, points? I think 79 points. And if you look defensively, they did exactly what you would have, uh, you know, what you would have thought they needed to do to do to win the game they held the Cavs to in the you know, 80 something points uh, but for all the 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 great play that guys like Rozier have given you at home and and the rest of those Celtics role players uh man they could not throw it in the ocean from a boat oh, the other night I was, about I, to I was say, shocked not to shocked. not to jump the gun to the other game but it was the same I mean, it looks like Golden State went off offensively in their game but really they didn't that they score 121 points, but it was because Houston was having eight second possessions. They, I, I can't, I don't, I didn't see the stats, but they had to have missed. They had to have missed 25 three pointers just in the second half. Well, I think overall Houston was like eight for 40 something. Oh. But the the difference between those two is Boston has an interior presence. When when those shots weren't falling. They've got Al Horford down There's there. There's no excuse for not going and, and, inside. And they just they did not go to Al Horford at all. They were content to stand out there and fire up jumper after jumper. That's not who they are. Now on the bright side, for the for Boston on the bright side, you got a glimpse into the future in this series. Because Jason Tatum is going to be a superstar. 
I mean, that kid is unbelievable. So Boston is going to be just fine. I think sitting here today, they've got to feel like they let one they you let one get away because like this was their LeBron's form. already gone, man. It's, if you're Boston, he's already gone. That's the way they're going to be they're, thinking about they're, it. They're 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 in a good spot. They're in a good spot to say the least. Now the Rockets, on the other hand, uh, for a half last night, I think they went in the halftime with a twelve point lead. Uh, for a half, I thought. Yeah, especially after Cleveland won, because what a road team. They've won, they won like 20-something games in the history of the NBA in Game 7s. Right. I thought, what are the odds we're going to get two? twice in the same weekend. Yeah, right. In two days, we're going to get two. So I thought, eh, you know, maybe Houston's really going to do this thing. They come out in the first half, man, it felt like they pushed Golden State around. They got physical with them. They went inside some. And then everything changed. And then everything. They came out in the third quarter and could not – make anything. It almost felt like if they could have just skipped halftime, they'd have won that game. If they could have just stayed out on the court and kept playing, but man, it was like going in there and sitting down. Different guys came back out. Is Chris, if Chris Paul plays are the Houston Rockets in the NBA Finals right now? Because Jalen Rose called it that morning. He said, he's not playing. Yeah, he, He's not playing. He called it. I don't think so. I think the Warriors still beat him. I, look, it's it, it's apples and oranges though because everything changes if he's on the floor. I, right. See, I, I disagree. I think Golden State. If Chris beat Paul them. plays, they win. I think if Chris Paul plays, the Rockets beat the Warriors, and I, I don't think you're it's, the same guy who sat here last week and said that. I, I, I did hundred tries, they would never beat him. I, I did, days. I did, and and I will be the guy that sits here and says, "Man, I was wrong. I I, I was wrong. I, the Rockets, yeah, they they." Let one get her. They, I know they gave one game away. I can't remember which one it was, but they gave one game away. Last night in the first half, they really punched Golden State in the mouth. And I don't know if it's Golden State kind of letting off the letting off the pedal. You know, last year they were the they were the villain. Everybody hated them, and they went out like they had something to prove, and they annihilated the entire NBA playoffs. This year, I don't know what's going on, but this doesn't this this isn't the same Golden State team we saw last year. This team looks a little more vulnerable now. Even though it's the exact same it's, uh, it's thing. It's basically That's the exact same said, team. Right. They, to me, they just feel a little more vulnerable. I feel what you're saying. I, I, don't, yeah. know why, I don't know if they're... You know, and I they have all year. Uh, yes, yes. And like and like we talked about, I mean, at some point, I think it was after they had lost their 12th game, if I recall, and it was probably sometime in January or so, and we were like, is this a story? And I'm like, look, it, it's not as big of a story as people are making out to be, but for a team that lost seven games two years ago, it's a story. I mean, the, the, when they lose two games in a row, it's a story. Yeah, I, you know, I, last night, Clay Thompson got three fouls, I think, in the first quarter. So, yeah, I mean, this team, they, watching them, they, 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 like I said, they steamrolled last year. This year, you know, not so much. So, I, I think that if if all things are equal, right now, I think if Chris Paul plays last night, I think Houston... Uh, we're getting Houston and, and Cleveland for an NBA championship. That and that's being not said, something I would have said two weeks ago. Well, all that being said, uh, he didn't. They won. Yeah. Do you? I mean, what's your on a, on a scale of one to ten? What's your level of excitement about this? A scale of one to ten. Ten, obviously, being. My 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 wife is having a child, but I'm sorry I can't be there. I've got to watch basketball. One being, oh, there's a a stamp collectors meeting at the bingo hall. Well, I'll record the game and maybe we'll catch it later. That's a that's a hell of a gap there. <laughs> uh, five, okay. Uh, yeah, uh, I mean you said it a few minutes ago. It just feels in every way. How LeBron James? We'll, we'll get into this in a minute, but how he drugged this team. And that's literally what he did. He basically put a rope around all of them at the waist and said, "Come on!" And you felt like they didn't want to. No, like no. They, 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 I, they, I honestly believe there are guys on this team. I'm dead serious. Who are angry right now that they have to keep playing basketball? Well, if you listen, that's how it feels. If you listen to some of LeBron's comments, it kind of feels like he doesn't even want to be there. Well, <laughs> but he's played a hundred games. I saw he's played four hundred. And fifty three minutes more than the next, than the second place person on the season. Now I don't only know some of the maths. I don't know all the maths. Right. But that's almost ten more games than anybody else has played in the league. The dude is tired, man. 
He was tired going into Game Six. I know he was tired going to Game Seven. How he got these guys here, and not, I don't know. Not just physically tired. He seems mentally exhausted. Uh, he's, yeah, to no, me. he's he, he's worn slap out head to toe, mind, body, spirit, everything. I don't think that this series is is going more than I think five is the the top. No, we talked about. I've got today. a hard time believing that that he can get these guys two wins over Golden State. My interest level is pretty pretty high for the initial game. I mean, I, I will watch game one, but if Golden State wins it by more than five points, I just... If Cleveland is going to have any prayer, they have to win the first game. I really don't even think they can get down a game. Yeah. Because I, I, don't, I think they're, the, the, the role players on this team, their psyches are that fragile. If I, even winning the game would you. help them. I, I agree with you. I think... Game one is going to be the highest rated game of the whole series. And just to be fair, man, a lot of people the, the are going Vegas to do just odds that. on this right now are eleven to one. If you bet a thousand bucks on Golden State right now and they sweep, you would win ninety bucks profit. That's and, and you that's cannot absurd. make the argument that's a good thing, man. No, it is bad for the league. This isn't what the league would have wanted. That being said, what what how far back do you want to go? If you could just start with all uh, every team in the league, who's your perfect matchup? I mean, I guess every league league's going to want the Lakers and the Celtics, right? But, right. Um, outside I, I, of, that, I think of the of, of the realistic teams. Well, I was going to say of the realistic teams. I think you're basically talking these four teams that were in the conference finals. Maybe if you want to throw. I mean, Toronto feels there. like they should have been legit. I mean, they were a one seed. Yeah. But they, they aren't in the dream scenario. No, I, I think of the teams that were uh, had a legitimate shot to, to be here, I think the league's dream scenario, and, I, and I'm going to put an asterisk next to this. Right. I know what you're going to say. I think it's this. But only if Cleveland can stand in there and trade punches with them. Okay. If they can't. I think that they would have just as soon had Boston and Golden State in there. See, I, I if the league did want this matchup, I think they're crazy. Well, it's a I, it's a the NBA is a star driven league. There is no bigger star than LeBron James, and and there's no bigger group of stars than Golden State. So right. that's why I say, as long as if the NBA can have it in a perfect world, and you can guarantee a competitive six game Do series, think, seven game series, I think you, they would take the Cavs you, and Warriors. You can't. But you can't. And, and I don't, can you not guarantee it? You can't even hope for it. Well, I don't think that I don't think that Boston would have given do you think any better series. But I think the fact that you could it would have been new. It would have been new. You could you could play the you know the the current team, the current dominant team against the up and coming dominant. Do team. Do you think this 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 series, assuming it would have ended in a similar number of games, would, would it have got? It, will it get better ratings than? If Boston and Houston had played in the finals, ooh, that's a tough one. It is a tough one. I mean, I almost want to say as much complaining as I've done that. Yeah, I think it will. I think more people will watch this because I, I think the more so I too. think about it, the more I think you're right. I mean, it's a star-driven league. Look, look I mean, there would be people fine watching with these LeBron games who the don't even care who win. There are people watching these games who don't even care who wins. I'm t- what, what is my latest analogy, man? What did I just tell you today? The NBA is like professional wrestling, except it's real. That I swear to you, man, I'm on to something with that. The 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 rivalries. Hmm. I mean, like we talked about today. If LeBron's leaving, and and all bets are off, man. Of course, he would rather stay in the East. Why wouldn't you rather stay in the East? Boston would be a great place for him to go, except he can't go to Boston. He can't go to Boston because Kyrie's in Boston. Well, not even not even Kyrie being in Boston. He just he can't go to Boston, and that that'd be like Michael Jordan going and playing for the Knicks. No, or Des Bryant going to play for the for the Redskins. But you didn't have a problem with that. I mean, well, that's because we've seen that fifteen million times right, in the NFL now. Right, because that's my whole point. In the NBA, what the players want dictates everything that happens in the league, and you do not see that anywhere else. Man, these guys run the show. They run the show. 
Um, the personnel issues on an NBA team in the locker room dictates everything. And right now it looks like LeBron's got plenty of those. Well, one thing that he does have plenty of, for sure, uh, legacy points. You yeah. Know, he, he's, uh, you know, the, the, you said it before, we're not going to do the MJ-LeBron comparison. That has been done everywhere that there has been talk of sport for the last well, look, five or six years. And to say that those two guys play and played in completely different leagues is Man. the understatement. Oh, yeah. It, it's, it's not even... Not even it's the barely same thing. the same game. But taking this group, you you asked earlier today, the group, I think it was 2007, the first time he went with right, Cleveland. Right, right. Where was, was San, that, did he have a better shot that well, year? Yeah, where San Antonio just, I mean, it, it, non-competitive is not the word. Is this group on par with that group in 07? Yeah, is him... Pushing the, is him pushing these guys. What does this finals trip, win or lose, do for do for his legacy? And do you think that it it makes a difference if he wins or loses at this point? He's already lost five of them. The, I don't think it hurts his legacy to lose this game because I think people think he's completely overmatched. There'll always be people who make fun of LeBron. Um, what's impacting his legacy is that it's just another year without another ring. The number of rings he wins, that impacts his legacy. So in that, it is another missed opportunity. But this ring was missed out on way before this week. Hmm. I mean, and you said it to me today. Man, he did this to himself. That's the difference between these two teams. That 2007 team, LeBron's a fresh-faced, Disney-fied kind of, oh, man, he's a great guy. And I mean, you know me, man. I was two years ago. Even a year ago, man, I hated all these people complaining about LeBron. Man, he's lost me. He 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 just seems like an impossible dude to be on a team with. I don't know how else you say it. Well, I, th- I, you know, I we think we talked about fair, it today too. Kyrie I think a fair gave assessment. up rings, man. You know, I told you today. I said he sat down with his wife at some point. And was like, baby, I just can't do it. I know I'm costing us money. I know I'm costing me a Hall of Fame career. I know I'm giving up a ring. I can't play with this dude anymore. His yeah. ego, his demands, his attitude. I can't do it. I, I think you said it. No one's going to hold the fact that he's going to lose this series. Against him, uh-uh. uh, yeah, this, he's playing with house money to getting this group that he has currently, which is a different group than he had three months ago. They completely just turned the whole team over. Now a lot of that's his doing, and I've told you before. Look, if he feels like he's got bum teammates, all he needs to do is go look in the mirror because that's all on him. Yeah. But dragging this group to the finals, I think is is. A bigger accomplishment than it would have been winning the winning, winning with the Heat, winning it with oh certainly winning it with the Heat, uh, but even even I think winning the the one they they won a couple years ago, I think this is a bigger accomplishment than even winning that one. Wow! Because, because this this I, I told you I've said it before this group wouldn't win thirty five games. Now, You're right. No, I agree with you yeah, there. Uh, as far as overall legacy, you know, I mean, there's always going to be the ones that compare him to Jordan. Jordan never lost. Da, 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 da. Look, man, you said it. it's it's when he went to Miami, he he completely changed the game. Yes, yeah, he completely changed the game. Yeah, you, know, you want super teams? Some people are going to argue the NBA has always had super teams. I'm going to say no. That the current itineration of super teams started with him, and so he's stuck on three. And I believe he's going to be stuck on three. I don't I don't think he'll get another one. The only the only the only way I see him getting another one is he won't be going the, to Houston. I said that, way, that be, Houston needed to lose to open that door for him. Now that's happened. If a, if he goes to Houston, they'll be going to stay next year. If he gets another ring, he's going to be in Ray Allen mode, if you understand what I'm saying. Going ring, huh? It huh? will not be as the primary player on that team. It'll be a 34-year-old LeBron three or four years from now um, who is contributing. And I don't know if he's got that in him or not. I, I, I don't see Golden I'm con- State. I'm not convinced three years from now he's going to be a Golden role player. States. Have you watched that guy lately? He's amazing. I said, well, no, but you know how it works, man. When you drop off, you drop off fast. Um, but we talked about this last week. I told you the only team that could beat Golden State in a series was Golden State. 
and you're seeing some evidence of it now, if that locker room starts to fall apart or something weird starts going on there, that's the only thing I can see preventing them from winning this one and two more. I don't see anyone handling them unless LeBron goes to Houston. That's possible. And even then, man, that, that's... Mm, I'm still not sold. If he goes to Houston with Chris Paul and James Harden, what if it Capella, just, but Yeah, but you don't even know if it works, man. Uh, it'll even, work. Okay. It'll work. One place that they are not going to win an NBA title this year or for the foreseeable future, just up the road, Charlotte Hornets. Are they in title contention? No. No. What are they going to do? I, we've talked about it. I believe they're going to move Kemba Walker. Uh, Dylan Jackson from uh, the SB Nation's uh, blog on the Hornets comes out with five potential trades for Kemba Walker this offseason. One of them uh, involves the Suns, one's with the Cavs, one's with the Pistons, Pacers, and Lakers. We'll run through these real quick because I find some of them really interesting, BG. Uh, the first one will start with the Suns. It has Charlotte sending Kemba Walker to Phoenix for the 16th overall pick in this year's draft. The Miami Heat's first round pick in 2021 and Dragon Bender. Uh, Jackson says, uh, you know, Booker, he mentions Booker becoming increasingly frustrated with not making the playoffs. Uh, Phoenix has promised Booker that they're going to be a little more aggressive this offseason, so bringing in Walker to pair with him could be nice on, on Charlotte's end. You're getting the 16th pick this year. That Miami first round pick in 21, 2021 uh, could be a total rebuild down in down in South Beach. The next one, and this one you know, is a place that uh, Walker's name was floated out around around the trade deadline. Cleveland sending the eighth pick in Jordan Clarkson. Now, what do you think about this one, BG? We talked about Phoenix, but what do you think about this trade to Cleveland and getting the eighth pick in Jordan Clarkson? I, I, I like the I like the first option better. It just multiple draft picks to me is hard to give up, especially that Miami pick in 2021. Mm-hmm. With you just said that man, that could be that could be a sixth overall. Yeah, it could be, be, I mean, it could be a high pick. Uh, and I know it feels like it's far off, but in today's NBA, I mean, yes, there's value later on, but it just feels like you really need one of those first eight picks. Well, as we said, the the eighth pick, Jackson mentions that it uh, that. Top ten pick, you could get Wendell Carter. Uh, they that would give them eight and eleven, so you could come away with potentially Michael Porter Jr. too in that one. I guess the real question here is how likely do you think it is that multiples of these scenarios are in play? I, I think there's a lot of scenarios in play. I, I do. I, I I think there's a lot of potential scenarios. But, uh, but Walker, let's go back and say that you were right back in October when you said trade him now. Because oh, yeah. whatever his value is now, it is not what it was then because someone could have been using him as we speak. Yep. He had another playoff run in him because of the way his contract is structured now. You you don't have – and however much basketball he's got left in it, either way, he's got one fewer year than he did. Yep. I, I, and, and so you, it's a missed opportunity because the Hornets – I mean, it's absurd that this that, that this happened. And I mean, I remember, I'm not going to name names, but a, a person who listens to the show argued me up and down um, on Facebook that, no, you don't trade Kimball Walker. I'm like, why? Yeah, you do. You trade Kimball Walker because, well, we don't need to argue that now. That's going to happen, I think. And I think it's going to happen soon. Of all the scenarios that, that we've looked at, I like the one to the Suns the best. Right, well, one to number three. To the Pistons, and this one gets you rid of Michael G- Kidd Gilchrist contract. This one proposed is bringing back a first round pick next year. Reggie Bullock, Reggie Jackson, Henry Ellenson. Nah. I didn't see Nick Batum mentioned in any of these. I know he's not. Uh, one that I like, Cindy Walker to the Pacers. And bringing back, but, but that you don't like, you just like that because you like Kemba and you want him to play for <laughs> well, the Pacers. Well, it brings you back Corey Joseph, who is a, you know, he's a, yeah, he's a, Okay, he's a backup point guard, but it brings you back Joseph. It brings you back the 23rd pick in this year's draft, and it brings you back T.J. Leaf. Uh, he did Leaf. I don't know if he played at all this past season. So, Indiana. other than the fact that Kemba goes to the Pacers, remind me why you like this. Well, because I yeah, 
I like T.J. Leaf. I, but, I think. but but no, what you meant was that I like him <laughs> walking to the pages. Like I, you keep saying the wrong thing. You would just tell the truth, man. Well, I mean, I like Kimba Walker to the Pacers. Can but you I, see him wearing that? Is that yes? I can't see him wearing that. Yes, but lastly, the last scenario Jackson mentions: sending Walker to L.A. Now, I'm not really sure what the deal with this is. You know, you've got Lon- Lonzo Ball out there already. So, I'm well, that's not, where LeBron's going, right? Yeah, I'm not sure if this is a scenario that L.A. would be interested in. Uh, but sending Kimball Walker out to LA for Brandon Ingram, BG, I'm here to tell you. If Brandon Ingram is the real deal. If that is a trade that is on the table, Charlotte should pull the trigger on that one yesterday. I just man. don't know that I buy that. I don't think so because, like I said, you already you already have Lonzo. What are you what are you bringing in Kimball for? But if that's on the table, do it. Here's my Mitch, question. I know you're listening, Mitch. James, pull the trigger, make it happen. Bring Brandon Ingram to the Queen City. Is uh. Just it just reminded me. Is this the LeBron to the Lakers thing? Is that just dead now? Because that was a foregone conclusion four months ago. That's just where he was going. No, everybody I, knew. No, no. I think that's I think that's still a real thing. I I think maybe some of the talk on it has cooled a little. I don't know if that's LeBron kind of telling because everything he does is through his people. Oh yeah. Everything yeah. is coordinated. Nothing is done by accident. I don't know if that's maybe him telling everybody like, just chill. But I, I'm, I'm with you. I haven't heard as much about it. You heard the Lakers come out and say that they were going to start focusing some more on the summer of 2019 when I think Clay Thompson comes and Kawhi Leonard is free agent. So, you know, there was some talk that maybe that they've gotten word that LeBron is looking elsewhere. But no, I think LeBron to LA is still a still a possibility. I don't know why he would want to do it unless that, it's just a quality of life thing. Yeah, he just wants to live in LA. But no, I think that's still a thing. Okay. All right, BG, your selection Sunday was this past Sunday. I know my selection Sunday in March is a holiday. I shut everything down. I don't move off my couch all day long waiting for the brackets to be released. The baseball brackets are out. We know where the Gamecocks are going. The Tigers, the Tar Heels are all in there. Uh, Two of those are hosting. One is not. We'll let you guys in podcast land figure out who is who but bg give me your initial impressions on the bracket what do you think um it's it's a normal college world series bracket in that you see lots and lots of schools um that you look at and you think oh well they can't be very good and you do a little research and you're like oh oh so like schools like cal state fullerton or wright state moorhead state samford these teams can flat out beat you and I, it, it look baseball. You know it. You guys were a national seed last year. You lost mm-hmm. two straight games to start the tournament. By sit down, go home. Does that mean North Carolina didn't have a good baseball team? Of course not. No, I think but, Davidson just had like one robot arm pitcher that just shut him down completely. It it can be a humbling game for sure. South Carolina goes to Greenville, North Carolina. That's uh, East Carolina. The last time we did that was in 2009, the year before our first national title, where we were unceremoniously sent home with two straight losses to start the game, to start the tournament. Hmm. So, I mean, literally, you can go from losing the first two games of a tournament to winning a national title the next year. That's just the way this works. And over a season, talent shows itself, but not necessarily over a weekend. Um that being said, I think South Carolina's bracket is not that tough. Uh, they get Ohio State to start the tournament. Ohio State, a team that they've handled pretty well historically, a uh, team that really didn't have a great season, played sort of 500 baseball in the Big Ten, which a, other, a, a conference that's not nearly as strong as the Which other regional are you guys matched up with? What's that? Which other regional are you guys matched up with? Um the way I'm looking at it, I believe it is the Athens Regional. No, I'm wrong. The Fayetteville Regional. Okay. Um, so I believe that's Arkansas, Dallas Baptist, Oral Roberts, and then I literally because you can't get a decent bracket printed off. Is that Southern so, Miss? Southern okay. Miss. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, I'm not gonna call South Carolina to Omaha, but if a two seed was going to make it, that's that's not the worst bracket to draw. The only flat-out legitimate nasty threat out of those eight teams is Arkansas. Well, I think you're overlooking Dallas Baptist. 
Well, let's da- talk about the Tar Heels for I a think second. Dallas no. Baptist is going to make some noise in the Fayetteville Regional. Well, I mean, just they, a hunch. They, 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 they certainly were, I think could, they were just man. they were at Super Regional a few years ago, they not last could. year. I think uh, as a three seed, that's a that's a dangerous one to watch. Uh, the Tar Heels, they're hosting. Get it pulled up here. Uh, they're the one. Purdue is the two. Houston is the three. North Carolina A and T is the four. BG, I, I don't watch the Big Ten Network, so I'm not going to pretend that I know all things Purdue baseball. Uh, but uh, as a Tar Heel man sitting here, I feel pretty confident that the Tar Heels should be headed to a Super Regional. I think um, that the the Tar Heels have the same issue going on that Golden State has. Their biggest enemy the past few seasons has been themselves. When postseason rolls yeah. around, North Carolina baseball tends to sort of fall in on itself. You're right, it and, does. and I don't know what causes that kind of thing, but uh, I think North Carolina and Clemson both need to make some noise in this tournament. I, I I think both fan bases are a little tired of underachieving in the postseason. Who's uh? You got the brackets over in front of you. Who who's our bracket? Who's our region matched up with? Well, let me see if I can find it here. I think we're on uh, we're on the opposite side of Florida, so we should be somewhere on this side. This is great radio. These are tiny, tiny, tiny logos. Chapel Hill, there it is. You're right here at the bottom, cut in half. Oh, of so course. So you've got yeah, Purdue, um, Houston, and North Carolina A and T. Yeah, who 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 are, who's our regional? Who are we matched up with? Um, that would be Dalen, Florida. So that's the Stetson. Stetson, region. South okay. Florida, Oklahoma State, and Hartford. Again, it, you know, I take it back. You guys might have an easier road to Omaha than we do. Hmm. Well, the Tigers, uh, they are hosting a regional, not a national seed. So unless some upset, upsets happen, the Tigers will be headed on the road to a super regional. But they've got Vanderbilt, St. John's, and Moorhead State. BG, I, 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 guess I love the Tigers' road to uh, road to a super regional here. Uh, Vanderbilt is, you know, they've had some good run. I think they won a national title a couple years ago. Uh, but they kind of had a below expectation season this year, uh, so I, I mean, it's hard for me to it's hard for me to picture anybody coming out of this. Now, Morehead State, I think, just won the Ohio Valley Conference, uh, so in that first game, I think they're going to provide a challenge. But it's hard to imagine the Tigers not coming out of their region. Difficult, yeah, 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 yeah. And and just I, to to acknowledge the eight hundred pound gorilla in the room here, as far as. Obviously, nobody was making the the argument that South Carolina should have hosted anything. So, we're good with that. You guys, well, I've got a a, a Clemson and North Carolina stat here for you, Uh okay? It's just this simple. Clemson's RPI was 11. They're a 12 seed. They're the 12th seeded team. Yeah. Okay, so about where the RPI put them. Florida State, their RPI, this is one of the schools that beat them out, Mm -hmm. fifth. North Carolina, eight. Tigers had a strength of schedule of mm-hmm. 34. Guess where Florida State and UNC strength, strength of schedule? Same conference. Probably top 10. Four and five. There you go. In the nation. And, and, and again, people want to throw all this Ray Tanner stuff out, whatever. Okay. In my opinion, Monty Lee and his Tigers were done a favor by not being made a national seed. This is a baseball program that under Monty Lee has earned nothing. They've fallen on their face three years in a row in the tournament. I think they play better with a little bit of a chip on their shoulder. I, say, look, I, I don't think, like you said, their road to Omaha where, is... I was say, where's Clemson going if they win for a Super Regional? All right, let me, let me pull out my two-part bracket here. Two-part bracket. Um, if Clemson wins the, well, they're matched up with they're going Tallahassee. Florida State, right? They're mat- yes. Okay. Yeah, they would go to Florida State, probably. Um, yeah, to to face Florida State. I mean, I would assume you've got Mississippi State in that. Um, that's Clemson's best hope right there, is that Mississippi State comes out of that regional as the winner, and then they would host. I see the way that they've done this. Uh, you know the new seating in the, in the baseball tournament. I, I wouldn't mind the trip to Tallahassee if I'm Clemson. It's a, a same argument I made with you guys last year in the basketball tournament, drawing Florida in the Elite Eight. It's a familiar team. There's no surprises. You know what they're going to do. 
They know what you're going to do. Well, sure. It's a matter of you know who yeah. goes out and does it. I, I wouldn't mind. Here's, here's the thing, though. Let's I just mind keep that. That, this in mind. If Clemson really was, and we don't know, the first team out in that parlance, you know, if they were the national nine seed or the ten seed, you really think that there, there's a good chance they still host a super regional. There, some one of these one seeds is going to lose. Well, you just well, I mean, you it's going to happen. Thing, if, if Clemson, you say Clemson's eleven. So if they make it to Omaha, if you give them that eight seed or that nine seed, if you make it to Omaha, first trip up, you're getting Florida in that first game. That ain't what you want. They're an eleven. They make it to Omaha. That they, they, they could get us. Uh, they could get uh, Oregon State. Yeah, they're gonna get them one of, one of those lower seasons. I, I don't. I don't know if. I don't know if anybody wants Florida. I think they they might be in for a back to back. I think both of these tournament. This is an interesting tournament for South Carolina and, and Clemson. Not to leave you guys out cold, but our fan bases care more about baseball than your fan base does. North Carolina has a perennially great regular season team. I don't know, they draw pretty good crowds up here for baseball. Well, I'm just saying they need to do something in the tournament. They need to they need to make it to Omaha this year, but. Monty Lee now in his fourth year at Clemson is starting to forge a legacy for himself that even with really good talent, they don't play as well in the postseason. I think this is going to be the year that changes. Um, But there is some pressure because we talked about this. This needs to be the year that changes Mm. because Clemson's going to lose a lot of talent. Now, they'll reload. They'll have young talent coming in, but that talent will be exactly that, very young. Yeah. South Carolina, at the beginning of the season, most most prognosticators I read said that it would be an accomplishment if we made the tournament. So you feel like Mark Kingston in his first year is sort of playing with house money now. But he has a chance to start to forge his legacy of this is the same South Carolina team. You get us into the tournament, you don't want to play us. Well, you said it the, you said it the other week. Now you're, when it... Kind of started looking like okay, you guys were definitely in after there for a while. It didn't look like you were going to be in. It looked like there was no chance. We're and, gonna be. And, and you said it the other day. It, we're going to be a dangerous two seed. No one seed is going to want to see us as a two seed in right. that region. So, but you know, all of that goes out the window if you lose one baseball game. So it's like that's and let's just be honest. I mean that that's why nobody makes a living predicting college baseball because. Whew, well, look, every year in these things, this particular round, there always seems to be somebody that sneaks up on you, somebody that knocks off at top seed. Uh, you know, a couple of years, last year I think it was, it was Davidson sent us home early. BG, give me a sleeper pick. Who's going to make some noise this weekend and, and ruin some plans for some folks? I'm going to go with uh, UCLA, the two seed out in Minneapolis. Um, they're, they're matched up with the Corvallis, uh, Oregon State uh, Regional. Um, I just feel like outside of LSU, uh, UCLA is a is a program that's faced this stuff before. They've been to the College World Series. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they're a lot like South Carolina, um, who is my actual sleeper pick. Uh, but since I can't do that, no, you're not allowed to do. Yeah, that, right. Man. So UCLA is a team that was there, has repeatedly been there. I think UCLA as a Athletic program actually has more national titles than any school in the nation. Um, they have like 127 national titles or something like that. I what? just remember them the year we beat them in the college world. Well, they Series. win a lot of water polo and well, that kind of stuff too, I mean, don't they? All those people have parents too. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying they won some their, water polo. Well, we won and, some equestrian. Yeah, nobody you, cares. You, you shut up. No one cares. Um, anyway, so I, I can see them sort of having lost a little of their shine. Uh, just like South Carolina, so I, I think UCLA has a good shot to at least make it to Omaha. We'll see how further, how much further than that they go. I definitely don't think LSU does. That's just what they do. Um, Minnesota, I'm not so sure about. Uh, obviously, they were good enough to win a one seed, but that, again, was in the Big Ten. I, I, I'll give you two. One, I give a shout-out to our Indiana friend, Indiana the Hoosiers heading down to the Lone Star State. They're surrounded by Texas schools. In baseball, everybody knows this time of year, it's all about pitching. It's all about the arms. Indiana's got the... the I didn't fifth, know you wanted me to say something. I thought you no, just no, no, forgot no. what you were saying. The Indiana's got, The Hoosiers have the fifth lowest ERA in the country. 
But now for the real sleeper, BG. You ready for this one? Sure. Tennessee Tech. Why not? Tennessee Tech, the, the two seed in, in their region, the hottest hitting team. These guys will match. They bat 342 as a team. They've got two of the top 10 batting averages in the country. They score over 10 runs a game. Over 10 runs a game. The arms are a little suspect from what I've looked at and checked out. Their arms are a little suspect, but if they can uh, if they can get something out of their pitchers, good luck outscoring these guys. Well, I think they played Moorhead State like six times in a week and a half between closing the season out it's with them. Difficult to say and three what times kind in, of the, in the tournament. They've seen those ten runs against, but we'll find out. We'll find out. Tennessee Tech heading out to Omaha. UCLA. I'm going to national take my national pick. championship. I'll take the Florida Gators. Uh, that's a cop out. Number one team in the country, but Luke May's brother is still there, so the championship pedigree runs deep in the May family. Give me the Gators. Yeah, I didn't know I was picking a national title, man. It says um, it right here. We're in our pre in our yeah, production I, I, meeting, I it says champ pick and sleeper team. I'm gonna go with North Carolina pay, State, pay, man. Pay attention. North Carolina State. Wolf. They don't, win, they don't win a national championship in anything, man. Get out of here with that nonsense. <laughs> All right. We're gonna close out the show like we do every week. Until someone steals it and we'll start doing something else. Thumbs up and thumbs down, BG. I'm going to go through, through these real quick. We're pressed for time. Deshaun Watson at number 50 on the top 100 list. We'll get into this list once it's all released, but they're kind of dripping it out. Watson checks in at 50, BG. Thumbs up or thumbs down? Thumbs up. Maybe it should have been a little higher. Thumbs up at 50? Yeah. I'm going thumbs down. He's played seven games. Now, he looked fantastic in if those seven games. If he had played games. eight games, he would have been number one. Uh, he looked fantastic in Deshaun those eight Watson games. Deshaun Watson is the best player to ever play any sport ever. Man, and that you, includes Michael Jordan. Man, you, you have just completely gone the other way. Now, thumbs down. I mean, Watson, he hasn't played enough, man. Earn it. Earn it. Thumbs up, thumbs down. The Carolina Panthers. The sale is now final. Is it Tepper or Tapper? Works for me. I think it's David Tepper. He's too rich for us to talk about anyway. Uh, the, the sale is final. There's been some talk about a new stadium in Charlotte. Been some talk about where they have the training camp at Wofford continuing on. Carolina Panthers, are they going to reloc- relocate their training camp and or build a new stadium outside of Charlotte, potentially? I think he was non-committal on the, the long-term plans in the Queen City. Uh, I'm going thumbs up. I think they are going to move the training camp. Uh, and they, If you want to build a dome stadium, it has been rumored, so you can kind of get that year-round well, revenue. You put or, so either one of those gives you a thumbs up. I, have to be both. I, I, I give both. I give both. Well, you, you talk about a dome, you want to get that year-round revenue. There's nowhere to build that in downtown Charlotte. They're definitely moving the training camp. You can mark that, that, that down. That's happening. That's thumbs up. I don't know about the stadium. It seems kind of superfluous to me, but whatever. Well, what is it? Well, I said thumbs up. I didn't hear you. Yeah, I mean, they're moving the training camp. Thumbs up. Jeez, jeez. Listen. What about the stadium? No, I don't think they're building a stadium. That seems crazy to me. So you have a thumb sideways. No, it's or. You said and or, which means if one of it's them the happens, same thing. I'm, I'm tired of dealing with I'm you. I'm just going by what thumbs you up, wrote. Thumbs down. NBA playoff start times. These things are starting at like 9.30, thumbs man. Thumbs down. Thumbs down. Stupid, man. They need to start at 6 p.m. so that old folks like me can stay up and watch it. And I'm struggling to stay at the halftime. God, I know what things. you mean, man. Yeah, it's rough. Is, this it's is a, uh, a young league starting to take over the the yeah. most prized demographic. Yeah. You want to get the kids. What kids Your are staying up? average fan is 19 years what, old, man. You know, what 12-year-old kid can stay up to 1130 to and watch a basketball, baseball basketball game? should have taught them this. They yes. Did, they did it to themselves. The yes. NBA needs to stop. Well, baseball's finally started walking that back now, yep, too. but it's too late. Uh Ronald Acuna on the DL after uh, or on the 10-day DL was a sprained ACL. Thumbs up or thumbs down that Ten days, he's back out there. Thumbs down. I saw some tweets from Chipper Jones and some other people that when it happened and they watched it live were very concerned. I, I, they, they, I read between the lines on some of that language. I don't think people feel good about this one, man. I, I think this could be a month and a half, two months kind of thing. I, I'm with you. Anything ACL has never been ten days anything. Bad news for Acuna. I think he's going to be out for a little while. And finally... Uh, Ray Tanner, thumbs up or thumbs down. Ray Tanner swaps the Clemson tournament spot on the card right before the brackets were revealed, costing them a national seed. BG, thumbs up. That sounds just like a Ray Tanner move. Oh, thumbs up. If you look thumbs on up. the official card, you can actually see, see where the, he erased the scribble marks, where he erased the word Clemson. Everything else is typed out, 
but Georgia is written in a in a Gamecock type scrawl. Yeah, they're, they're scribble marks. Good for you, Ray. Yeah. We hate costing the Tigers. That's such a Gamecock move, man. So lame.